Welcome back to The Wood Grafter and today in the shop we're going to make a whole series of 20mm holes using the Trend MFT jig. If that sounds good, stick around. So my workbench is coming on pretty well, it's now at 900 millimeters high, everything's perfectly level, it's as stable as you like, and I've turned my attention to these black inserts. Now if you want to build a similar sort of bench, the course is live over at www.thewoodcrafter.com and over there you're going to find hours and hours and hours of build information inside the course as well as those plans. So if you want to build it, go over to the website, look for the Woodcrafter Workbench course and see what you think. But today it's all about these holes, drilling these holes. And I've decided I'm going to give this Trend Tool Technology MFT jig a go. Now this is what you get inside the kit. You get some silver paper, uh, sticky paper, you get an instruction booklet, you get four alignment pegs and one, two, three dogs that are 30 millimeters at this end and 20 millimeters at this end. You get this jig that's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten holes in it and these are 30 millimeter holes and they're designed to be used with a 30 millimeter bush. In use it's really really quite simple you have a router with a 20 millimeter bit inside it and a 30 millimeter bush. The bush goes in the hole the router makes the hole. The alignment pins align it to the edge of your board. The 20 and 30 millimeter dogs allow you to work across the board once you've made a start. The silver paper takes up any slack you've got inside your bush. And we're gonna put that through its paces in a second so you can see how that's done. Just a few more features of the jig. It also comes with a 45 degree angle here. So if you wanted to put a 45 degree angle on your top, you can just use an edging router to do that. It's got a 50 millimeter radius here and a 100 millimeter radius here if you want to round them off. And here it's got this elongated groove here and that will allow you to cut a handle inside this if you wanted that to be portable. Okay, so let's put it through its paces and see what we think. And then once we've got it done, we'll come back and see whether it's accurate or not. Now the idea behind this jig is simplicity itself. These are all precision made. It's a super solid piece of work. There's no flex inside this whatsoever. With it, you get these four alignment pins and you get these three, what should we call them, alignment dogs. They're 30 millimeter on the outside, so they slot into that hole. And they're 20 millimeters on the inside, so they slot into the 20 millimeter hole you're going to make. And we'll see those used in a second. You're going to need a couple of clamps. And what I've also put is a couple of MDF backer boards on here. For two reasons, I don't want to go into the bench I'm currently building. This is the insert for my bench. But I also want to make sure I get no blowout on the back of this so it's nice and neat, should I ever wish to turn it over and use the other side. So, take your pins and put your pins in these alignment holes here on this edge. I've got the Trend logo sticking up. These are quite tight, but they do go in. In fact, everything on this is milled to a very, very high tolerance. But there can be errors inside, and we'll talk about that in a second. I'm just making sure that my jig is actually referencing on the edge of the black stuff, not on an overhang of the MDF. That would be a bit embarrassing if I reference off the wrong board. So it's looking good. I'm all nice and clear. And then I can just clamp that into position, making sure Everything is still referenced well and tight. I'm just going to push this around so I can get some support on it and check myself. Yep, that's referenced, that's referenced and that's referenced. Now obviously this is going to work best if your 30mm bush is actually 30mm. These are to a very high tolerance, so that bush wants to sit in there with no wobble or slack whatsoever. Now Trend do do a bush that's designed for this jig and that gives you zero wobble 
inside there. Now if your bush is going to move around in that, so there's no guarantee that your 20 millimeter hole is going to be centered in the bush. And that's the big challenge I think with this type of jig. It comes down to the accuracy of your tools. Not the accuracy of you as a user, it's idiot proof. The accuracy of your tools. So if you've got a bush that's very, very loose, it's gonna give you errors across this and that will creep into your work down the line because nothing is square. Now this, and that's where these strips come in. They're designed to take up the slack in your bush. And what you would do, you take these strips, you'd look at the width of your bush, the depth of the bush from that to the plate, and you'd cut an appropriate size strip out of this. And it's got to be long enough so it wraps around your bush once or twice or three times, whatever it is you need, but it wraps around that bush in equal amounts. You don't want you know one side longer than the other. So in my case, that would be about there, that much. Then you peel off the backer, but then once you get that, you can then put that on, put into place and wrap it around the outside edge of your bush, keeping it nice and tight, of course. Now what that's obviously done is just made my bush a little bit thicker. So now when it goes in, it's a firm fit, and there's zero, zero wobble inside that bush, and that's what you're looking for. Now what I don't know is whether that's going to wear as we go through the job, but it seems okay, it seems okay, it doesn't seem to be causing any issues. Okay, so that's good. Yeah, so that's now taken out any slack in that bush whatsoever. So I guess it's, uh, I guess it works. Now don't forget, that's a festival bush, it's precision made. This is a trend thing, precision made, but I still had to adjust that a little bit. And it wasn't too hard, fiddly, messy, felt like a frig to me, but it works, so we're in good shape. So now I've got my bush sorted out. The next job, make some holes. So I'm just putting the, the router in place, and I'm just going to plunge down, and I'm just going to lock that off. And that's going to zero this out on one of those posts there. Now I know that this is 19 millimeter board, so I'm going to give it a 20 millimeter cut there. So when I plunge down to my stop, it'll go through this board into the MDF underneath it, and we should be in good shape. Shall we give it a go and see what happens? Obviously I won't be able to route where these clamps are, they're in the way, but I don't want to take those off. So we're out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, probably. And then I'll just use these, then I'll just use these um, alignment dogs to make sure nothing moves, and I'll just move the clamps around and do the final two holes. Let's get cracking and see how we get on. Well, that was stupidly easy. I'm going to drop these dogs in these holes now, just to um, keep everything locked into place. I'm going to move these clamps round to this edge, probably, he says. Well, somewhere else, anyway. I'm just going to move these clamps round so they're out of the way. I'll leave those alignment dogs in just for belt and braces, I think, and we'll get these three holes cut here. I don't think it gets much easier than that when it comes to using a tool. So now you just take this out, drop out the pins, which are quite tight. Well, 
And now I can just move the board down to finish off the cuts in this top. One, two, triangle's always good. Now just looking at that, can you see that? There's a little bit of movement in that board, which is not good, I don't think. So I'm going to drop back these pins again, just so I can line up against this front edge, so everything lines up nicely. Still got movement on that edge, so yeah, can't be overly impressed with that, but we'll see what happens. So we'll go ahead and we'll just finish off these cuts here. You can see that you end up with a grid of 20 millimeter holes, which I guess is what you want, really. I'm going to leave those alignment pins in the edge here, I think. I'm now going to come in and cut down this way. One, two, three. I'm just going to make sure that's pushed in to the edge. And now I can move across. I think what I'll do, so now I can just work across the board. So I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to put those two in there. I'm going to put one there one in there and one in there yeah. now once i've got these spread out you know i've got these in opposing corners as much as i can and this one here in the center sort of kind of clamping it together there is zero movement in this board not even a wiggle yeah. so that's obviously the best technique use the edge guides to make sure that you're lined up across these get your series of holes drilled and then you can just bring the board up and you're going to be in relatively good shape i think let's finish off So there it is, back in its rightful place. We now have a panel with a series of 20 millimeter holes in place. I've just dropped in my benchdogs.co.uk fence here, because that's where that's going to live, which is great. I'm just gonna drop in a track rail here and we can check it for square. Well, the first thing I'll say about it, there's no slack in those holes, really, really nice. Not too tight, so everything goes in. But there's no slack inside it at all. That's the rail tightened into place. So the moment of truth is this square. Now this is 90 degrees here, so why not use a template to see how good the template is? There you go, that looks pretty good. Looks pretty square to me. I'm not unhappy with that at all. So there you have it. We have the Trend MFT jig. Comes with the jig itself, comes with four alignment pins, comes with three 30mm, 20mm dogs, some silver strips, and a instruction booklet. So we're now in October 2020. That jig is going to cost you about 190 euros, 170 pound. So it is not a cheap investment. Now my friends over at the Souter store do a similar product that will cost you about 49 euros. It doesn't come with these pins, but it certainly comes with a couple of dogs and it's not beyond the wit of man to use a square to make sure that you're square and once you're up and running, the dogs will give you what you need to do in alignment. So it's not a cheap proposition. Now bear in mind the path guide system is a similar sort of price, maybe at 10 pound or so more. The path guide system is gonna give you more flexibility, more versatility. Doesn't give you any more accuracy because this has actually come out bang on, but the path guide is really, really foolproof. On this one, there's a couple of watches. You've gotta make sure that your bush is 30 millimeters and it's tight inside there, otherwise it's out of alignment. And you notice there was some movement in this in the early stages of making the board so you need to watch out for that as well but if you do that oops and you look after it and you take your time you do end up with something that is square and you also end up with something that's nice tight fit for your dog so overall it's successful it works it's not a cheap proposition there's alternatives on the market but that's it that's the trend mft 
Jake, I hope you found this useful and I'll see you soon.